We've been following the progress of AI upscaling technology for years now at Digital Foundry. DLSS, XESS, FSR, but now there's a new contender. A very different contender, actually. Uh, Microsoft's Auto SR is built into its latest range of co-pilot laptops kitted out with the ARM-based Qualcomm Snapdragon X Elite processor. The idea is intriguing, to put the neural processing unit within these chips to task in AI upscaling any given game. So yeah, there's a white list of supported games out of the box, and Microsoft tells me it's busy validating more games, but there's nothing stopping you from engaging the technology on any application right now, any game. How Auto SR actually works is quite different from existing technologies, it has to be. The likes of DLSS and XESS use a number of inputs, the low resolution base image for starters of course, but it also has access to so much more. History from prior frames, motion vectors to inform where pixels are likely to move, color information, depth information, so much. From there it reconstructs a higher quality image. Auto SR is so flexible and in theory works with anything you throw at it because it only uses the base low resolution image, the final output from the game. Nothing else is needed. It can accept any base resolution that exists within a 700 to 900 line range. 720p to 900p then realistically I guess. When Auto SR is active, it disables resolutions outside of that range, even if your display supports higher resolutions. The base image is processed through a convolutional neural network that's been trained to add detail and even perform anti-aliasing. Once done, the processed image is sent out to the Windows compositor where it's scaled to your active output resolution. Auto SR usually only supports games with full screen modes, but in titles like God of War, which is officially supported, you can use its standard borderless full screen mode by setting the Windows desktop resolution to 720p. You will note though that the active signal type remains higher, and that's essentially uh, what's coming to your screen. All of the testing you'll see in my video comes from 720p base imagery, and I've captured it from a Microsoft Surface Laptop 7 that's outputting a 4K signal over USB. That's not to say that Auto SR is attempting to upscale to 4K, it aims for some kind of intermediate target Microsoft is being a little coy on, then uses standard GPU bilinear or LAN shows upscaling to achieve the final resolve. First things first, because Auto SR is only looking at the final image produced by the game, uh, there are going to be certain weaknesses you'll spot. HUD elements or uh, plain text elements are put through the neural network too, producing results that are okay I guess, but clearly not quite right. As logos and splash screens kick off most games, that's going to be your first impression. Another immediate limitation, no support for HDR. Bit of a shame, but I expect there'll be some kind of solution in due course. Still, the proof of the pudding is in the tasting, and the pudding in question is actual gaming, right? Uh, when I first looked at Auto SR, I referred to Microsoft's blog about the technology, which showed impressive results. Uh, first order of business is to try to replicate those results. I think I did it. Okay, so Borderlands 3 here with a base resolution of 720p. Microsoft shows its results up against a 1440p upscaled output. A 2x multiplier on both axes, which is pretty ambitious. To begin with, I actually tested across native 720p, then Auto SR upscaling uh, with my desktop set to 1080p, 1440p and 2160p, 4K. If it's difficult to see much difference between the upscaled versions, it's because Auto SR doesn't change its results depending on your selected output resolution. So in that sense, it's very different to DLSS and other reconstruction-based upscalers. Auto SR is actually supplying the same upscaled content at all resolutions, which is then being scaled by the GPU for output. What you will note, however, is that performance across the board is very, very similar. I don't think Auto SR has a GPU computational cost as such. Run by run variance is there, but I think that's down to variable results from what is a rather poor Qualcomm GPU. With no tangible performance impact, there's the suggestion here that the MPU is providing a free lunch effectively, but that's not the case. There's a latency hit instead, which Microsoft says is 12 milliseconds. 
That's quite substantial, but it does seem to be a fixed cost. It's not variable. So you quickly adjust to it, especially if you're using a controller. Okay then, having established that Auto SR runs at one output resolution, I'm gonna switch completely to 4K captures from this point. There'll be some GPU scaling in there, but the smart nature of the Auto SR upscaling should stand out. We're gonna to return to Borderlands 3, native 720p on the left, Auto SR on the right. It's clear that the sign on the building here is resolving higher detail, just as one example. But more interesting, perhaps, is that the grass is less aliased and presenting at what definitely looks like a higher resolution. Looking at the gnarly tree trunks here, a blurred image on the left looks considerably cleaner and more detailed on the right with Auto SR. So here's the thing. Auto SR is effectively a post-process on a completed game frame. The better the input you give Auto SR, the better the output. I'm using Borderlands 3 at 720p on medium settings, but crucially I've swapped from the default FXAA anti-aliasing to TAA. Now, of course, we know TAA adds blur, but it fixes a lot of the flickering issues inherent to FXAA. There's temporal consistency there. Auto SR has no idea of history, so you need to feed it as stable an image as possible, even if it is a blurry one. That gives it the best chance of making it through the neural net with the best possible result. Final example, this weird alien structure here is very blurred at 720p, but again, Lots more detail is being resolved with Auto SR. Looks pretty good, I'd say. If Borderlands was the chosen example for Microsoft, one might imagine that this is a best case scenario, possibly a cherry picked scenario. Uh, bold colors and outlines, maybe it is easier for the model to deal with, but I do think it has genuine utility elsewhere. I think Auto SR is actually pretty good. I'm gonna present Remedies Control here as one of the more interesting examples of Auto SR at work from my testing. So I captured this at 4K, but I also fed out the signal from the capture card to a 4K monitor so I could appreciate the actual experience. We're dealing with a 720p base resolution here. Auto SR is doing the rest. So this is an entirely subjective take, but I found the image to be perfectly acceptable on a 4K screen and clearly preferable to native 720p upscaled in the more basic manner. But let's be clear here, what I'm not saying is that this is as good as a 4K native experience. And Auto SR, in fairness, isn't making any of those kind of claims in the way that other upscalers do. It's just about producing a visually pleasing image for a higher resolution display. And in that respect, I feel it is successful. And again, it's clear there are detail increases and anti-aliasing improvements. The circular lamps here at the top of the screen are an interesting example, while in-surface detail generally is stronger. That said, Control highlights some of the weaknesses of Auto SR. The technology thrives on a smooth image with little noise, but the issue is that Remedy's TAA is not particularly great. The opening scene in Control is an interesting example. The flickering on the bus shelter here is only improved to touch compared to the native 720p image. Meanwhile, as we move to Jessie, you can see sub-pixel breakup on her hair. Again, this is something a better anti-aliasing technique like DLSS could improve upon. But as Auto SR has no concept of history, it can only work with the single frame it's given. Another example of Auto SR's limitations as a post-process filter is the comparison as Jesse moves through the initial office environment. Heavy aliasing on the blinds there that Auto SR can't really work with. But on a more holistic level, the cleaner the input you give to Auto SR, the better the results you'll get out at the end. I'm not going to be doing any in-depth comparisons with DLSS, XESS or FSR because they are fundamentally very different technologies. I guess FSR1 is comparable. Even so, um, Control does support an older version of DLSS2 and here I'm using the Ultra Performance Mode to upscale from 720p to 4K. So in effect we're seeing Nvidia and Microsoft upscaling technologies both working from the same base 720p resolution. I'd say that both technologies work well in resolving extra detail, but the key difference here is the advantages DLSS has in terms of the extra information it has to work with in reconstructing the image. It allows for superior anti-aliasing, much better handling of sub-pixel detail like hair, and crucially, access to history means that post-process shimmer on edges is almost gone. 
What DLSS doesn't have is the flexibility of a post-process filter though. You can't apply it to any game, only those supported by DLSS. Allow me to illustrate how effective this advantage can be. Cyberpunk is not supported out of the box by AutoSR. However, I can add it to the whitelisted apps and it just kind of works. And works pretty well, I'd say. It looks reasonable, decent. Now the footage here may look choppy, but that's not because of AutoSR. It's because of the Snapdragon GPU within the Surface laptop, uh, which really isn't that impressive. Um, another example of the flexibility of AutoSR comes down to the fact that as it's a post-process filter, you can set it to work post-processing anything really. Case in point, God of War. This is an officially supported AutoSR title, and I've got it upscaling from 720p here. This game ships with temporally consistent TAA, so it manages to skirt the less impressive aspects of AutoSR and plays to its strengths. But here's an interesting comparison. I can actually use AutoSR in combination with the upscalers already within the game. The standard TAA upscaling and FSR2, both working from an internal 480p or thereabouts. FSR is too crunchy, noisy and sharpened to look particularly good, but the standard TAA upscale with an auto SR pass looks okay-ish. Perhaps more impressive here are my results with The Witcher 3. The inbuilt TAA seemed to have a lot of flicker when I tested it, so I opted instead for XESS Ultra Quality Mode. So here I'm actually upscaling to 720p because it delivered the most stable image, and that was then fed into AutoSR for the results you're seeing here. So upscaling upon upscaling sounds like a recipe for disaster, but ultimately it all comes down to the quality of the input image. The more consistent and stable it is, the better the chances of auto SR producing a reasonable result. And all of this got me thinking. Right now, auto SR is Snapdragon only, but I would expect the Copilot feature set to work on x86 based processors with the requisite MPU. So the recently released AMD Strix point line should receive the feature at some point, which will address most of the GPU issues I've seen with the Snapdragon. Uh, and yes, there's going to be Strix point laptops combined with RTX GPUs, and I don't see any reason why DLSS upscaled imagery couldn't be fed into Auto SR. Now, whether you'd actually want to do that, bearing in mind that Auto SR only works between 700 to 900 lines of input resolution, well, that's another topic, but uh, I just want to try it out. Um, one final point of clarification Microsoft Auto SR isn't Microsoft Direct SR, it's entirely different. At this point in the video, you'll know what Auto SR is all about. Uh, but Direct SR is something different. It's essentially a method of integrating various existing super resolution technologies like DLSS, FSR2, FSR3, and XESS into a single API approved by Microsoft, Intel, Nvidia, and AMD, which should make for easier development, while at the same time guaranteeing, hopefully, good quality implementations of those technologies. I suspect that the usual quality differentiations between the various techniques will remain, but hopefully it will see an end to games shipping with only selected upscaler support. Okay, wrap up time. Let's go back to Auto SR. It's not a reconstruction technique. Um, it has its limitations owing to its status as a post-process filter, but as a value added feature to a laptop with limited GPU capabilities, it does work in making low resolution presentations look better on higher resolution screens. Laptop screens in particular are a good fit, but even on desktop displays, I think it has its place. As an experiment, I also played my 720p versus Auto SR captures on a gaming portable. Uh, this is the a and Kun with a large 8.4 inch 1600p screen. I'd say that the image benefits from Auto SR in terms of extra detail. Gotta say though, even at 8.4 inches, well, 720p native still looks reasonable. Auto SR may have a role to play there. Um, I guess it all depends on how power hungry the MPU is as to whether it's viable for a gaming handheld. An interesting final experiment then, and something to think about. Uh, but that's all for me on this one. Like, subscribe, share on the off chance you enjoyed the content. Ring the bell for allegedly instant notifications when new DF content drops. And please do consider 
joining us on the DF Supporter Program. High quality video downloads of everything we do, access to our amazing community, early access to DF Direct Weekly and the chance to help shape the show. And uh, yeah, please do check out store.digitalfoundry.net for a look at our merchandising wares. But that's all from me on this one. Thanks for watching and supporting Digital Foundry.